Let's bring into the conversation Georgia's Republican Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger. Mm. Mr. Secretary, it's good to have you back on the show with us. Uh, your reaction to the judgment of almost $788 million uh, against Fox News for Dominion voting systems. You've dealt with all these conspiracy theories yourself, to your credit. You have stood up to Donald Trump and many others who wanted you to switch votes in your state. What do you think about this judgment yesterday? It's vindication. We've been saying this for over two and a half years now that we had an honest and fair election in Georgia. We audited the machines. We did a 100% hand recount. We got virtually the same answers. So yesterday was vindication. And so I know it's been a hard fought battle for Dominion, but also for the people of Georgia, and really for our nation. All these disinformation, lies, deceit, whatever you want to call it, it really just ripped apart our country. And we've been needlessly having this confrontation because at the end of the day, in Georgia, we had an honest and fair election. And yesterday we were vindicated. What message do you think this sends, Mr. Secretary, to people who continue to push conspiracy theories, Donald Trump chief among them? It's another blow. We've had all the court decisions that, that prove that those theories were wrong. We've seen time and again those uh, people who, even in the midterm elections, who were continue to push their conspiracy theories voted down or voted out of office. How big a message is this, and do you think it gets into the ears of the people who need to hear it? I think it should have gotten into the people's ears. They should have figured this out after I had my landslide victory, my re-election victory. Because after all this came out, I've been traveling the state of Georgia. I traveled it for two years, really explained to people exactly what happened, what didn't happen, so they had the information. And in Georgia, we figured it out, and we've moved forward. And I'm really grateful for that. And I'm hoping that the rest of the country will start moving forward and realizing you have to build your campaign on what your principles are, not on tearing people apart, not by making stuff up by on the facts by you know what you want to do for people with a positive aspirational vision mm. so mr secretary this is eddie claude um, um, so how do we begin to rebuild the trust eroded by these conspiracy theories by those who believe that somehow our democratic process our election systems are, have been compromised by these by this hyper partisanship so we get the we get the the settlement with uh, around dominion but there's still this question about whether or not elections are fair whether or not politics Politicians are actually doing uh, the work on behalf of the people. So how do we begin to rebuild that trust? I know you've been traveling around Georgia, but folks are still doubtful about the election system. I think voters eventually will hold the politicians accountable at the ballot box. And accountability is a good thing. And that's really where push comes to shove and the rubber meets the road. And so we've had great success in Georgia. We've moved past that. We built a broad-based coalition over that based on the facts, based on the truth, because integrity and character matter. And that's what really comes you know, to the fore. You know, the average American right now is worried about their pocketbook issues, but they go about their business. They're honest, good, hardworking people. And that's what they're expecting from their elected leadership. And that's what's going to be rewarded. And sometimes we don't have the best choices. And that's what's disappointing. I'm looking forward that Republicans start putting forth at all levels, you know, people of character so that we can continue just, you know, grow our party and rebuild our party. And we have some great people out there throughout the country, and they've been fighting this battle. But obviously, in Georgia, you know, I was at the tip of the spear just because I was the chief election official, and I had a great team that supported me, and we stood fast. We stood fast in the truth, and yesterday the truth was vindicated. Caddy. Mr. Raffensperger, talking of character and choices and, and your experience of being at the tip of the spear, it is possible that Donald Trump is the Republican Party's nominee in 2024 after everything that Georgia has been through. Would you support him again if he's the Republican Party's nominee? I think I've been pretty clear. What I'm looking for is someone that has character, integrity, be able to engage in civil discourse. And then a touch of kindness, as Ronald Reagan said. So when that all comes together, that's how you build trust. That's how you build confidence. And that's how you build unified and diversified uh, teams. And so that's how I'm looking for. And uh, so, so I'll let you know when I find that person. If it is Donald Trump, is that a no then? I think I've been pretty clear on what my position is. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. Well, Mr. Secretary, whether he, you have, he has your support or not, there is a real chance that Donald Trump will be the nominee in 2024, and he's going to bring with him this host of conspiracy theories, this anger, this potential threat of violence. How does your state, which is going to be one of the top battleground states yet again in an upcoming election, how does your state prepare for that onslaught that's coming? 
Well, I think people need to take a look uh, really at the history of Georgia because Stacey Abrams, she lost twice and both times it was never supported by the facts. President Trump, you know, lost it, came up short in 2020. And so I think people are going to lean into looking for character. They're going to look at a positive vision. People can actually accomplish something. You know, this isn't just about sound bites. This is about actually doing the hard work of making America better. And it really makes better better makes America better when you have better policies and you're going to work it together and sometimes you have to work across the aisle you know this is a 50 plus one country and you don't know which way that 50 plus one is going to go so you have to work with people you have to build broad-based coalitions that's what I've done in Georgia uh, can, can, can I ask you um, really quickly we, we replay that phone call that extraordinary <clears throat> phone call uh, some would say a perfect phone call if you're a prosecutor in the state of Georgia between uh, Donald Trump and you. It's really one of the most extraordinary recordings. Pitch perfect. We've, ever, we've, ever, we've ever heard before. Uh, I, I am curious as, as the DA is considering bringing charges against uh, the former president. I know that's not your job and, it, and, and you're not to draw any conclusions there. I'm wondering when you recorded that phone call, if you thought based on the Georgia laws, the three or four Georgia laws the president could have broken there, that what he was saying was an attempt to throw the election and, and violate uh, some basic laws in Georgia. Well, I think the benefit of having that recording out there on the Internet is anyone in America can listen to it and anyone in America can come to their own conclusion. And I've never doubted the common sense and the good values of the American people. So they'll come to the right conclusion if they listen to it. Yeah, what was your conclusion? Well, we stood fast on the law. And that's what I told President Trump, that there weren't 5,000 dead people. We had found two. I understand that he had paid for a report, and that report said there's about 25. Well, 25 and two is a whole lot closer than his number of 5,000. We found two more since then, so there's a total of four dead people that voted. We didn't have any underage voting. You know, the, the facts were, that President Trump came up short. The reason he came up short is that 24,000 Georgians just skipped the presidential race. They didn't vote for either candidate, and yet they voted down ballot on different races. And that's why President Trump came up short. Our Republican congressman got about 33,000 more votes than President Trump did collectively. And then our state reps and our state senators scored about five or 6% higher than President Trump did. That's why the man came up short. This is what it is. People need to quit whining and need to start moving on. They maybe need to hire better political consultants, whatever it takes. But at the end of the day, when you lose a football game, basketball game, whatever it is, you can always come back the next season and then suck it up and realize this is why you lost and you just got to go, go and try a little bit harder. But this yeah. game of politics is not really a game. What it is, it's about your character. And when the times get tough, your character will be revealed. And it's revealed to everyone's this past two years. Georgia's right. Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, thank you very much, sir, for being on this morning. Mr. Secretary, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it.